Hello, this is Angelo with Parker's Permaculture. I made a video recently where I took down a purple robe locust tree in my front yard using a handsaw. And I had, as I point to my shoulder, I had mentioned in that video, my right rotator cuff is basically non-existent from an accident about a decade ago. And um, I had declined to have surgery. So I had a very bad right broken leg a number of years ago due to um, roller derby. And it required three surgeries to repair it. And I had some not great reactions to anesthesia. And so I need to avoid having elective surgery if possible. In fact, when I broke my left leg, I was supposed to have a plate put in it and I opted not to for that reason. So I could get my shoulder repaired, but I'm not going to. It just feels like a risk I'm not willing to take and I don't wanna go through the recovery process. So instead I'm trying to do more adaptive technology in my garden. I find that swinging an ax does not bother my shoulder. That all the way around motion doesn't bother it. It is this, I have to do it with my left hand, it is this motion back and forth of a pruning saw that is just debilitatingly painful after about an hour. And so I've got to switch things up. I have a lot of trees here to prune every year and I find that I can't get it done with a handsaw in a timely manner because I have to take too many breaks and I'm paying for it the whole next day. I'm gonna break down some options for using power tools to do pruning and limbing in your garden. Hopefully this review will be helpful for you and I will demonstrate. I'm going to do some pruning today on my hazel tree here. Yes, there are still leaves on it and I probably should wait until they all fall, but I don't have time to wait for that to get started on pruning. So I'm going to start today. First, let's talk about some things that didn't work. A number of years ago, I bought a pole chainsaw. It was a big mistake. I was really excited to have it. I found it very helpful for pruning up high when I didn't want to get up on a ladder because two broken legs and I don't want to have any more. What I found was that when the pole was extended all of the way, the chainsaw was very tippy. It was very heavy. And I found I needed both hands to leverage it, to keep it upright and pointing where I wanted to go. And that was frustrating for me. All of the weight was at the end and it was not well counterbalanced. The main downside to the $80 chainsaw that I bought was that there are no replacement parts. I found that part of the plastic housing broke and I went to every hardware store in town, including including my local Parkers Hardware, and they have a lot of chainsaw repair that they do, but they didn't carry anything for these pole chainsaws. Basically, what I've discovered is that they're meant to basically be disposable because they're not that expensive. They're under $100. They want you just to purchase them when they break, you throw them out. Well, that's completely not in keeping with my permaculture ethos here. I want things to be repairable and want to be able to use them for years and years and years. So I decided I'm no longer gonna buy products where it turns out I can't get replacement parts when things break and chainsaws do break just because it comes with one extra chain that doesn't mean that other parts of it aren't going to break and many of the components are plastic and when they break you just can't you can't fix them you end up throwing them away so that's not a good deal for me so when i was looking to get a handheld chainsaw a little six to eight inch one because i've seen a number of other uh, youtubers use them including little spanish homestead which i'm a big fan of her youtube she's in spain and has a very different situation than me but i really love the work that she's doing so you should check her out um those are also the same situation. When you read reviews of them, there are no replacement parts. They may come with a spare chain, but you you can't get replacement parts for anything else on them. So when they break, the companies say, this is basically meant to be disposable for 60, 70, 80 bucks. You shouldn't expect this to have a long lifespan. That's not, that's not a go for me. So I asked in my alumni gardening group, which is a wonderful resource. I asked, what do y'all use? And some folks said, well, I might have like a 14 inch chainsaw, which oh, I would love to get a 14 inch like Husqvarna chainsaw. That's something I would like to have, but I can't justify the expense right now. And it also feels like overkill for a lot of my trees. A number of folks said, yeah, those little six to eight inch battery powered chainsaws are not that great. Have you thought about using a Sawzall? Well, I own a Sawzall. We inherited it from my husband's grandfather and it's great but it is plug-in and so I found that it doesn't reach many places in my orchard and it is an older model and it is really heavy it's heavy you know you're meant to use it two-handed so that's fine but um it's it's quite a hefty beast it's heavier than my uh, larger chainsaw that I have 
But other people said, have you thought about using perhaps like a DeWalt cordless Sawzall? And I thought, okay, I have a number of DeWalt battery chargeable tools like my impact driver, et cetera, et cetera. And I thought, well, this is great. I'll just go to the hardware store and I will buy the reciprocating saw and I can already use my battery packs. So I was busy yesterday morning editing video and I sent my husband to the hardware store for me and he reported back, did you know that the current models of DeWalt's, the batteries are not uh, compatible with models from four years ago. Don't you love that capitalist planned obsolescence where things that are supposed to be interchangeable, oh, we've updated everything. And now your tools that are perfectly good from four years ago, your battery packs won't fit into the new ones. And if you need to get a new battery pack, it won't fit into your older tools. So now you have to buy everything new. Super frustrating. So I was like, I'm not gonna spend $279 on a reciprocating saw with new battery packs. I'm gonna start looking on Craigslist and see if I can find an older model that is compatible with my battery packs that are perfectly good. And I was mentioning this to my father on the phone and he said, oh, I have a DeWalt reciprocating saw. It's like four years old and I don't need it. My dad lives in assisted living now. He's like, why don't you just take it? So he told me where it was. I went and I grabbed it. This is it. It is very lightweight. It is less than half the weight of my Sawzall. Even with the battery on, um, it's still considerably lighter. It is compatible with my older batteries. And I happen to already have all the blades because the blades for my Sawzall are compatible with my DeWalt. So I'm very excited to try this out today. I wanted to go over a few things about it first before I use it. Rechargeable battery. <laughs> It just very easily clicks in here. That's it. The saw itself has a safety here. It is a single action. So there's no dual action trigger like my chainsaw where you have to push a side button and then the trigger on the chainsaw. This is one action and it runs. So it's much easier to cut yourself. If you bump the trigger, it is going. So leave the safety on when you're not using it, okay? The other thing about it, so with the battery pack, it's definitely heavier than I would like for, for me with a bad shoulder. But once you're balancing on two hands and the recommended way to use it is this hand stays up here, it's not bad at all. So I think it's gonna be great for pruning. Also, it's really easy to swap out the blades there's just a little in here. You can push and pull out the blade and swap out for a different blade. There's all kinds of different lengths and um, quality coarseness of teeth. So getting a three pack or a four pack of blades might be good so you can test it out on various trees and various size limbs. So this is what I'm gonna use this year for pruning my trees. I'm hoping it will save my shoulder and I'm hoping that it makes quicker work of everything, not only pruning back the trees, but then cutting up the wood for kindling and firewood. Because the reality is I use a handsaw for all of that. The older I get, the more I think about accessible technology. How could we make our permaculture systems, our gardens, our orchards, our homesteads work as we age? If we aren't able to depend on younger generations to do those things for us, if we want to be able to do them for ourselves and continue to persist in our systems longer, we need to embrace technology. Permaculture is not some kind of Luddite philosophy. It's not anti-tech. It is about using responsible technology. Now, I know a lot of people in permaculture are really opposed to using petroleum-based products and therefore chainsaws can be something that is a little bit controversial. This feels less so to me because we have hydroelectric power and these are battery packs that not only can I charge, but I can recycle when I'm done with it's Much better than getting one of those little hand chain chainsaws that you can't replace any of the parts. And if anything breaks on it, that's it, it goes in the garbage. This is something where you can get replacement parts. You can get it serviced at your hardware store and it should last for years and years and years. Okay, please wear appropriate eye and ear protection if necessary. And also be aware when you are felling limbs, how far they can fall and that they are heavier than you anticipate. Use appropriate safety strategies when you are cutting down trees or any part of a tree. 
You can tell I filmed this last week before my thumb injury really flared up and I'm sure that this pruning aggravated it significantly. I like to go through with hand pruners and remove all of the smaller side branches. That gives me more room to see and more room to work whether I am using power tools or a hand saw for pruning. I try to keep all my different size prunings organized together. Here you can see I am piling up all of the smallest pieces. They will be used as mulch or as bedding for the poultry houses. So here's a couple of things I'm realizing. If the diameter of the branch is about as big around as my arm, the reciprocating saw cannot handle it. It is not gonna go through. So I feel like this is an instance where if I'm cutting something that large, I need to get out my regular chainsaw and that will be a lot more effective. I also feel like it takes two people if you're cutting those long, long branches because obviously the weight you're removing is much more significant than you think it's going to be. My other option would be to get on a ladder and take it down bit by bit by bit, but I'm trying to avoid getting on a ladder and my husband is tall and he's helping me. I think for branches that are smaller around than my wrist, this is gonna be a really good option for larger branches. I'm gonna to have to break out my big chainsaw. Also, the reciprocating saw is very jarring. So it's not nearly as smooth of a movement and it puts that motion up through my arm into my shoulder much more than my chainsaw does. So for that reason, I'm not sure if it's gonna be the best option long-term for me personally with a bad rotator cuff. I feel like the impact of the reciprocation travels all the way up my arm and into my shoulder very quickly. It's not comfortable. But for smaller branches, I think it's gonna be great. Good. Good. Is the camera still up there? It is. Okay, just to reiterate, this is what I'm discovering. This here, this is too big of a diameter. These are great if I'm pruning limbs like this or even like this, this is no problem. This, the reciprocal saw, oh, hello, little spider friend. Hello. The reciprocal saw does great work with that. Gonna need a hand saw or my chainsaw for these bigger limbs. With the branches down, I'm coming back with my hand pruners and removing all of these little side branches before I cut this up for firewood. This all makes excellent mulch, but also excellent bedding in my duck house. Well, here's the progress so far. Lots and lots and lots of greenery for mulch, for bedding in the poultry houses. You can see how much we've taken out here. Some of this stool needs to be lowered. There's way more space now in here. When we coppice our hazels, we try and take no more than a third per year. We're getting pretty close. I'm gonna come back and take this one out, but our battery packs are dead. So we'll have to let them charge. We have that stool we've maintained here. Again, gonna come back and take this down a little bit lower. But now we have wood for firewood. Obviously it will have to be cut and cured and lots and lots of biomass to use around the garden. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope that you are able to access appropriate tools to be able to make your permaculture design effective for you. I will be back very soon from outdoors in my permaculture garden here. Please check out my Patreon and PayPal down below in the description. If you are looking for a way to support this channel and you're like, Angela, I can't really give anything monetarily to you right now, clicking like and subscribe and sharing with your friends is a wonderful way you can support the work I do here. Thank you and I'll be back soon.